Hello, Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. Today I'll be answering questions from you, the Salesforce community. If you want to ask me something, just leave a comment down below. This audio was recorded in a mentoring session without video, so sit back and enjoy the configuration while I answer. If you're interested in getting a mentoring session, check out salesforcementor.com. Alrighty. So the big thing for me is um, when you're learning Apex and trying to get your first job, it's not enough to just say that you know Apex. You need to kind of prove it. Um, we're getting into this uh, type of market to where a lot of people want to become Salesforce developers. And it's not, let's say that it's not hard to get the uh, platform developer one. You know, there's really good study guides out there. You can study the, the questions and you can, you can know how to pass the exam without actually knowing how to code. And that's a big, um, that's a big red flag for me when I'm looking to hire somebody is that somebody who's been able to get their PD1 certification but actually knows nothing about coding itself. So I would say spend the time to learn how to code in general. You know, it doesn't just have to be an Apex. It doesn't need to be uh, Salesforce specific, but it it's just learning the basic concepts of a developer and a programmer. And that that boils down to many different areas where you can learn it from. So there's uh, there's Java free online Java courses that you can take. There are tons of resources that you can look at for just Apex and Salesforce programming. And then there's learning how to code in general across any language. So for me, since I already know how to code, not very uh, not I'm not just like locked into Apex. I can go and do uh, JavaScript, or I can do Java, or I can do PHP, Visuals, uh, Visual Basic, things like that. And it's really just learning how to read code to understand um, what is going on as you as you go through. Because the if statement in every language is going to work the same, you know. So it's understanding how to read specific pieces of code and what they're doing to break them down. So I, I guess the first piece of advice is learn just how to read code. Learn coding itself um, as you try to progress through your first job. Because the first thing that I'll do on an interview is give you a code snippet and ask you to tell me what it's doing. And if you can't pass that piece, then I'm. And if you can't pass that piece, but you have the PD one, you know you're you're out of here. Um, or we'll like put you on some sort of path to learn coding. But at least for that specific job, well, I would expect you for that. Um, and this is this is kind of moving towards a junior type role. So, um, as a junior developer, you should be able to read what's going on in certain pieces of code, and to be able to understand if I give you certain uh, requirements, how to put them into code itself, either doing pseudocode or whatever. Um, the next thing that I would probably do is to say earn your PD one. So I did say that you know it's not good to get PD1 without knowing how to actually code, but you that's like the barrier to entry now with a lot of the Salesforce jobs is earning that first certification um, as you're moving along, as you're going through your, your career, because it'll put you a cut above anybody that hasn't earned their, their PD1, and a lot of people are looking to get that certification. So I'd recommend getting that one. And then also getting your admin certification. So a lot of things that I look for in new developers is that if they have um, some understanding of the admin world uh, of Salesforce, so configurations, how process builders, workflows, and all that stuff works, because when you write code, it's going to be interacting with a lot of the other things that are going on, and we don't want you to hit a huge roadblock and or do specific actions that could be done in configuration um, inside of code. A perfect example is... Um, I've known developers who only knew the development side of Salesforce to write validation rules inside of triggers. And that is something that's easily accomplished in uh, configuration by creating a validation rule on an object. So it's more about knowing what tools are at your disposal. You don't need to be an expert in process builders or flows or anything like that, but understanding what they do and how they work so that you can know when to use them or know um, how they interact with your code. And then the third thing is just 
trying to get outside of your comfort zone in terms of ways that you get experience. So um, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but this is doing projects to uh, personal projects that can really just only impact you, but they help you learn code better. And then they become something that you can show on your resume as well. You can point to and say, look at this GitHub repo that I created or a bunch of my friends did um, that I helped contribute on to say, you know, I did this specific part. Look at how I wrote my specific code and you can kind of understand how my brain works. Um, so that's something that is seen a lot more in the, let's say the standard development world. So if you go to like uh, web development, everybody will have a portfolio of websites they built or apps they built um, because you have to a lot of times companies like to see what you are doing um, and this is more towards companies that will understand what you're doing because you'll get there are positions out there where you will be the only salesforce person in the company and you'll be left alone on an island to just work on salesforce um, and maybe people won't understand what exactly you are doing but if you're trying to get into the top tier companies or some sort of like, uh, you know, fang company, they will look for certain uh, things in terms of, you know, do you have any uh, prior coding experience? Do you have any projects that you can show us? Do you have um, things that you're proud of? You know, things that you can you can demonstrate what you're actually capable of versus just being able to pass a certification and a couple questions um, on there. So that's a big thing that I would say is just trying to have demonstrable things that you can show that you've been able to work on uh, personally or as a group. You now there's open source Salesforce projects and all of this will just go back into helping you learn how to code in general. Reading other people's code is one of the best ways to learn how to code. Create a portfolio on their website or a GitHub page that's to, for people to read your code, other people to read your code. Because for me, as if I'm like a, the hiring manager, I know development. The first thing that I'm going to do when I see a resume is Google search you and see if you have a GitHub repo, try to read through some of your code to see what's going on, and I'll look you up on LinkedIn and, and see what else is um what else you've been able to do in the community because a lot of people want these jobs you know a lot of people there's still a shortage of salesforce developers but um you know everybody's applying to the top tier jobs everybody wants to work at amazon and huge companies like that so if you if you're looking to kind of differentiate yourself that's a that's a really great way to do it i can't say off the top of my head that i know a site to look for like an open source project to work on. Um, I've generally found them as I've gone throughout my career and used different things that people have had out there. Um, so that's uh, a really good thing that I can probably follow up on to look to see if uh, there's there's an area to work on something like that. But then even even if it's not an open source project, let's say something that you're interested in. Like you want to uh, map all of the bars in your area and put it inside of Salesforce. That's something I won't say you can easily do, but that's something you can create inside of Salesforce. You know, put all the bars as accounts, create some sort of lightning web component um, map that put plots all of the bars around your area and maybe their best beer or something like that. So that's just like one idea that comes off the top of my head as a personal project that you could build and show somebody um, in an interview to say, Here, here's what I've actually done before. Um, I've taken it from the, the concept of just an idea to bringing it to life. Um, and this is, this is how, what my code looks like. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video was helpful, make sure to smash that like button. I mean, really smash it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're interested in a mentoring session, just like we had here, be sure to check out salesforcementor.com. There's a mentoring section with awesome mentors, not just myself. As always, remember, I believe in you.